Right. Let's have a look what we have for this week. Um, again, lots of opportunities that I can see in this week as well. I really hope last week you have actually grabbed all the opportunities and you have made money. Shortly, we'll go through what we have said, what market has done and what are the potential opportunities that we are uh, you know, looking at in this week. Now, uh, firstly, let me just quickly go through your message. Demo, hello. Maita, hello. Right. I'm very well. Thank you very much. Hanif, I'm very well. Alan is doing great now. He's recovered and he will be back this week. So again, I'll be shortly announcing his first, uh, you know, session after his recovery. That would be on Wednesday this week. Uh, again, as a monthly Q&A. Uh, please do not miss that because this is going to be great. Um, we will be going into a lot of different topics where you would potentially need some new updates, new information. Um, so again, please don't forget to you know, attend this session. It will be at 7 p.m. UK on this Wednesday, okay? Right, um, Bill, thank you for confirming. Thank you, Jade. Thank you, Answer, and thank you, Handy. Um, few many days we need to wait after the BTC halving. Okay, Craig is saying, hi, T, can you remind me of how many days we need to wait after the halving? Was it 265 days? That is correct, Craig. Again, we are still in that window. We will be potentially going in there to the upside before we actually head over towards uh, the target that I'll shortly, that's why I'll be able to show you some sort of, um, you know, stock and crypto sentiment today. This would actually give you a pretty decent idea what you can expect and when you can expect this market to actually turn around. Okay. Right. Um, what, <clears throat> what else would we have? Sunday screen already clear. Thank you, Andy. Brilliant. Uh, right. Let's have a look what we have uh, said last week, what market has done uh, before we actually head over towards, um, you know, talking about the geopolitics for this week, fundamental events for this week um, and potential opportunities for this week. Again, let me remind you once more, um, this Wednesday, Alan will be conducting the Q&A session, monthly Q&A session uh, in the TR. So please make sure you attend that live because it will be a pretty decent idea for you to ask live questions and also go through some updates that market has been doing do you should all know that we have been actually always researching new stuff we have been always back testing new stuff because again market is always dynamic it's never static and that's the reason we need to always keep up to date if we don't do it you will actually end up you know losing the edge in the market that's why you need to make sure that you're always, you know, on top of all of these updates. Good afternoon, Mr. T. Thank you, Zahir. Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, Chris Haiti, is there any impact the US dollar currency because of the attempted assassination? Yes, it would pretty, it pretty much would be uh, something that you should all be expecting in the market. Shortly, I'll explain that to you in the DXY. What would be the impact we are expecting? Um, I did actually, uh, you know, create sort of a small video for you, but it will be pretty much too late for you to actually see it. But again, it will be something that, um, again, would have an impact on the financial market. Um, now, how would it impact us as being a traders? We shortly will see that as well. Right. Let's have a look what we have um, said last week and what market has done. Because, again, we always do this little recap where even if you're wrong, we'd say that to you. Because, again, you need to know that. And it's always good for your confidence, your psychology to actually be you know, seeing like what we have said, what market has done and potentially what you have done and what market, um, you know, could have given you, um, you know, differently. Okay. I'm glad to see you here. It's my first week with We Trade Waves community. I hope I will learn and achieve more. Thank you all. Brilliant, Mohammed. Uh, welcome to our community. Again, take it easy and go slowly. Okay. Remember, it's it's the journey that you need to go through. And without this, there's no way you can actually be, uh, you know, making consistent money it's not about making money it's about consistently making money okay that's the main critical bit here that we always focus on um because that's the whole point if you can't rely on this income then you know it will not be able to give you that hope you know as a side hustle or as a full-time trader so that's why you need to have a consistency and the only way to get it is by being with the like-minded community and also by being with the mentors who actually can tell you how the market works and can teach you that stuff that market makers are actually showing on the charts. Right, let's have a look at the trades of the week that we have given last week. And I wanted to show you something. Remember, 
please don't take it negatively or don't take it the other way. Um, when I'm showing you a few stuffs, it's merely because I want you to actually go back and see what we have said, what market has done and how this has happened, because this is always going to be a learning curve. Um, and when I'm saying to you or when I'm updating those statuses on your dashboard, please make sure you every morning and every you know important news before that, you check the dashboard, regardless of whatever the trades, if even if there is no update, still make it as a habit that you need to come to the dashboard to look at these you know, titles here. Because if there is any change in the structure, if there is anything that I need to convey to you, this is where I will be talking to you. And I'll be assuming that you will be, because as a trader, you should be always active. And that's where you should be always. Every morning when you come you know, to your trading desk, you need to come and log into your dashboard to see that what if there is any update. And then before the New York session and after the London session, all these three points, it won't take more than two minutes of your time of the day. But if you can get something with this, then, you know, it might actually save you from a lot of hassle later on. OK, because sometimes structures change and when they change, we need to let you know. And like in this case, we did. So, again, pound yen was the first trade that we have asked you to actually look for a buy setup. And again, we expected market to give us a reaction from 207 level. This level was pretty much tapped. And again, above that, also market has gone and then came right back below. Shortly, we'll show you that, uh, you know, what market has done in terms of this one as well. So let's go towards pound yen. As you can see here, pound yen was expected to pull back, push right back up towards this zone here. It actually did do that, came back down, then went right back up and then came short down here. It's not just only for the pound yen. Shortly, I'll explain that to you, the levels as well, like what we have promised you and what we have said to you, watch out these levels where the market is going to give you some reactions. And if you don't believe me, go back to the last week's session, you would see that that is exactly what we have said. And again, it's nothing magical, you can learn it too. That is nothing that we are not teaching that we know. It's always that whatever we know, we always share it with our members. Now, the second one was US oil. Again, we expected market to go to the downside, push right back up towards 85 level. And I had some little note for you guys saying that we are looking for a US oil to give us a corrective structure or impulsive structure up towards the highlighted box. If oil breaks 82 and start to consolidate, then close your trade. We need to respect the 82 mark before hand, heading towards 85. Now, when market has actually broken 82 level here, in this way here, as soon as market has done that 82 level broken, on 9th of July, I have actually gone in here and I've updated the status for you. Oil has broken 82 now. Once it will pull back, take break even on this trade. That was 9th of July. And again, as you can see here, the 9th of July was here. Okay. And I did say that to you, it's going to come back, take the break even. So if you haven't taken the break even, as you can see here, market has dropped back again. So again, this is where your knowledge comes in. Yeah. And again, it's going to go to this level. There's no question about it. The only reason I said that to you is because we don't waste time. We don't want to waste time actually handing over up, down, up, down, and then eventually it goes to the upside. Rather, we actually get out, wait for this one to break down before we look for further buys. This time, it will be a better buy because we will have much better risk to reward. And that's what you should be doing as a trader. Your time is the most critical part here. If you waste your time in the drawdown, if you waste your time in just wasting your time in the messy structures, you're losing opportunities. And it's an opportunity cost that you need to factor into your trading plan. Okay. And that's why it is critical that you understand and listen to these things that, and read about these things when I'm actually putting it there. So again, please make a habit. Morning, London session, mid day, which is pretty much your New York session, and then as at the end of the London session, three times, literally will take mo not more than two minutes from you. Okay. Third one was the Euro New Zealand. Again, we expected market to give us a corrective structure below 76 level, push right back up towards 78. We expected 200 pips move to the upside this week. And again, let's have a look what market has done here. Euro New Zealand, this was the trade tapped 76 as you can see here push right back up towards this zone here which is 78 consolidated here and then push right back up again now you could be asking the question why not consolidation here let me just draw this one why not consolidation here why only in this box 
because these are the critical levels where market makers will leave the footprint and tell us what's next. Whether it's a continuation pattern or whether it's going to be a reversal, they will tell us here, okay? And these levels, the only way to know them is by actually understanding the WTW concept. And that's why we are here. Again, you can waste as much as time figuring out in the market. It would take another five years of your time, but eventually you're going to come back here. So why not wasting your, uh, you know, saving your time and your money? Because remember, money you can make any time. Time you cannot get it back. That's why utilize that time to get here so you can learn in the, in the next five years, you make money rather than actually, you know, just keep figuring out, okay? So again, as you can see here, all of these that we have said, market did do that. Now, one thing, again, we are not going to be 100% right. I'll show you where we are not right on that one as well. Again, we are not here to prove you that we are always right because no one can be in this market. No one knows what's going to be the next move in the market. Even the person who's going to move the market will be still 50-50 if there is any bigger player in the market than him or her before we actually you know, start to say something that it's going to, up, going to go up or down because no one knows really exactly what time of the day market is going to go. We are playing with the high probability uh, you know, trades here. And that's why you see these levels that I gave it to you. If you remember pound yen, I said, as soon as market goes above 207, we will be looking actively for a sell setup. For the euro yen, I said to you, as soon as market goes above 175, we will be looking for a pullback here. As soon as for the Aussie, New Aussie yen, we go and tap 109, we'll be actively looking for a drop in this one. And again, New Zealand yen as well, 99, break to the downside, CAD yen, 118119, break to the downside, and particularly chief yen, I said to you, 180. Do you think it's all magical levels? Not only just that, last week we said to you, the week before actually we said to you, it is heading to the upside towards this zone here, and then potentially from there towards 2390 zone. Market tapped that, came right back down towards 2070, 2350 level, push right back up towards where? 2420 zone, which is what I said to you. Again, all of this will be in the archive. It's not something that I'm making it up. It's all there recorded last Sunday that we have spoken about this one. And again, why do you think market has started to give you a reaction at 24? Why not at 2400? Why exactly at 2420? That's what you need to understand. Because again, if you don't understand these bits, you will be actually, you know, guessing in the market, thinking, okay, this is a 2400 major level. You should expect market to give us a reaction here. But instead, it was a reaction 20 pips above. And that is what market has done. It dropped from 2420, came back down. This week, you're going to see that again. Shortly, I'll give you some levels to watch out for this week. But you're going to see those levels either being respected or being broken very, very sharp. When you have a reaction like that, broken very, very sharp, you know something big is coming. There is a great reaction that will be expected. Shortly, we'll see that. Again, this is not something, like I said to you, I'm saying for the sake of it, you can go and watch the last week's recording because that's what we want you to always, you know, want you to go and watch and back test with our, what we have said and what market has done. And again, simply with the US oil as well, why after breaking 82, it needed to go to the upside. And why, if you didn't take the break even here, you would have been in a loss. Because that is sort of the questions you need to be asking yourself. The answer to this one will be in here, in this dashboard here. Once you go through all the masterclass course chapters, once you have gone through all the monthly Q&A uh, you know, sessions, once you have taken all these trades, then you will be able to see the charts very, very clearly, okay? Now, again, not every time we are going to be 100% right. That's why you see here this week, we were giving, uh, you know, this trade as being the trade of the, week, uh, the trade of the month. This was the reaction that we were expecting market to give us a corrective structure here. What market has done is they have given us this tiny pullback here. Rather than giving us a bigger corrective structure, it has given us this structure. This was a running flat and market decided to go right back up. Again, this was the stop loss. I did say that to you above this box with the 1% risk. 
because again market can always do anything at any particular time now if you are wrong in something you might be able to see that you know this might be the time where your risk management will come into place so this is why you need to understand what you're expecting from the market and what market has done for you remember this if you have taken it blindly you probably would be in a much more uh, you know loss than 1% but if you stick to the rules that we are actually giving it to you and follow that to the t then you're going to see some sort of a results in here and again that's why most of you you know deep down that you know it's working for you and if it isn't working for you, then there is something wrong that either you're not listening or you're not really ready to take that knowledge. These are the only two conditions. The third one is not there. You need to be just determined, hardworking, and follow the rules that we have been teaching you. They are there for a reason. So please make sure you keep doing that. And that is the recap for the last week and potentially for the last two weeks as well. And we will keep on doing that. And the reason for that one is not to actually brag about anything is just to merely give you the confidence in your psychology and also to let you know that if we can do it, if we can predict it, you can do that too. Remember, we are heading towards the era. Shortly, I'll show you that where we are heading at the moment. It's going to be quite tough times for the next two years for the whole world. If you don't have a side hustle, you have, don't have a side income, you are going to struggle. That's why you need to make sure you find something that actually makes you something on the side. And this is the best alternative as a side income if you just want to take it as a side income. Otherwise, the full-time trading is the perfect option for anyone out there. This is something that you can leave as a legacy for your next generation. All what you need to do is just learn it. That's all. And the next next 10, 15, 20 years, whatever the, you know, the, the time span that you would probably be wanting to trade, that would become easier for you. So please listen to us again. We are trying our best to actually convey the message. Now, if you still don't want to take the message and you still want to go and figure yourself out, keep wasting your time. Good luck. Right. Let's have a look what we have, uh, you know, for the rest of this um, week. But again, let me just see what we have for the next few months, just so you can actually get a pretty decent idea what we are expecting from fear and greed index. Now, remember, this is a fear and greed index. Time to time, I actually ask all of our traders, um, you know, to go into this one and then have a look at it. What's really happening? Remember, whenever you are having some sort of a correction in the market, you're expecting some sort of a bullishness into another market. Remember, that is the balance. That is the balance that needs to be maintained in the market. Okay. And that is the balance in life as well. If you take it any way in life, Something goes up, something goes down. And that is exactly how the principle of life works. Now, remember one thing here in this crypto and the stock market fear and greed index, what I needed to show you is this. The stock market is heading towards the greed index, okay? The greed zone. Very soon, you're going to pro probably this week, you're going to see that it probably would tap that greed zone. Now, the crypto market at the moment is actually in the fear zone. If you remember back in the days, uh, probably two, three uh, you know, months ago, I did say that it was an extreme greed zone here. I did say that it's going to go right back there towards the extreme fear zone. And then after that, we are going to get the bullishness into the crypto market. What market has done, they have came back to the fear zone, which means we still have some more downside in there. Might not be this month, probably in next month, but you are going to see that. Because remember, with the extreme fear, you're going to see retail traders are going to go away. And when they run away, that's the money that they leave for the big players to grab. And they're going to grab that money. Once they do that, this indicator is going to keep moving towards the extreme fear zone, the extreme greed zone. Okay, And when that is happening, you're going to see the stock market zone is going towards the fear and then the extreme fear. Okay. This is how it works because it's a shifting of money from the indices to the crypto. And that is what you need to understand. Now, looking at this one here, you are still expecting some more upside in the stock indices and you're expecting some more downside in the crypto market. Now, I'm not saying that it has to be exactly accurate, but you will be seeing some sort of a reaction as soon as this indicator will go below this zone here, extreme fear, and this indicator goes into this greed zone. Okay. 
And that is exactly what I'm actually seeing in the charts as well. Remember, this indicator alone have zero value. But when you combine this one with the geopolitics, when you combine this with the interest rates in the world, when you're actually combining this with the structures, that's when it becomes an extremely powerful tool, okay? And that is what we discuss during our sessions. So please make sure you keep an eye on this one. Somebody asked earlier, are, you, are we expecting that to happen in the next 265 days? This is what you're gonna see in the next 265 days. You'd see that we are still from April now, we are not even past 60 days. Let's go towards 265. You're gonna see that within that, we are gonna actually head over to this zone first and then head over to this zone after. And that is what you should be looking at you know, as soon as you actually get into the trades and you keep taking partial profits along the way. But now you know exactly how to handle this one and how the market is going to shift the money between these two, okay? Because it's going to be one way, uh, you know, coming in, one way coming out. And that's the things that we are really trading in the market, okay? So keep an eye on this one and Let's see when market is actually gives us that. Probably it will be a next week or week after or a month, but we will be keeping an eye on this one. And we know exactly when market is going to do that, what will happen to the stock market and what will happen to the crypto market. Okay, right. Now quickly your messages before we head over towards the fundamentals. In terms of the geopolitics, I do not see anything major apart from the Trump uh, you know, assassination um, you know, attempt that has been done, you know, uh, in, in the last 24 to 48 hours. That's the only thing that could actually impact the markets at the moment. Again, it would have a negative impact on the dollar because again, if you see some sort of instability in the economy, you would expect the currency to actually take the beating, okay? And again, the structure is also telling the same thing for us. Now, what would change the structure? Because at the moment, if you ask me, I would not touch the dollar, buy or sell at this point in time. I need at least 48 hours to actually figure that out, whether the market is actually going to go to the upside or downside for how long. I'll explain that to you what I meant by that. For how long, whether it's going to be a corrective structure upside, whether it's going to be an impulsive structure upside before the market drops again once more, it will all be discussed now shortly. Now again, that was the pretty much the geopolitical part. Um, again, let's have a look at your last few messages before we head over to the uh, calendar. Um, what do we have? James, hi, T-Hope. All is well with you and your family. I saw a crypto fear meter in extreme fear yesterday now has moved to fear. That is correct. So that's what I was actually showing you. Remember what you're looking at, uh, James, you probably would be looking at some sort of uh, monthly or um, you know weekly indicator. What I'm showing you at the moment is the overall in general so far, year to date, I would call it. That's what you need to be looking at. It's called feargreedmeter.com. You can double check that one, uh, but you would see that most of these indicators, meters, they would actually be very, very close to each other. Um, now, depending on which time frame you're looking at this meter, of course, if you look at it in the last week and a half or this month only, the crypto index would actually be visible as being a extreme greed because we have seen some sort of a decent push in most of the cryptocurrencies, as you can see here. Um, you know, for the month of July, we were anyway waiting for this one. So you can see that most of these ones actually have started to push up. This has also shot up XRP. AD also has shot up, Solana also has gone up, BNB also starting slowly to the upside, this also as well, and the BTC too. So again, as you can see here, that July has started to take into, uh, you know, president at the moment in the market. So you would probably be able to see some more bullishness, uh, you know, after some short-term weakness. Moise Haiti, what do you expect in gold? Another bull run to break all time high or just a correction to fill gaps above and drop again? Moise will touch base on that one. Don't worry, you'll get all the answers. Is it time to buy and hold silver for the medium term? Uh, JPEG, all these, uh, you know, commodities in this month, if you're talking, um, you know, just for the medium term, yes, they are buy in this month. Um, but is it a right time to buy? I probably wouldn't buy it at this level. I'd rather actually wait for the correction and then push right back up. That would potentially be the my trade. Uh, Murad, hi, Professor Tay. Could you share on bigger picture of the view of EU? Thanks for the support. Yes, we'll, we'll look at that one as well. Now, let's have a look at the calendar for this week. 
By the way, I really hope some of you have actually captured these moves. Actually, they were really, really good moves here. Um, all the gen alternatives. I did show you that, by the way. We probably would be getting something like this. So please tell me some, some of you have actually got at least some of these moves here. Any of these pairs would have been actually nice because at least market has given you 300 plus pips for all of these yen alternatives. Remember, they were waiting for some sort of um, news to actually trigger this drop. Um, and that drop was not anyway coming. So if you got it, you you did very, very good. Okay, that's what you, you, you're you supposed to be doing. Okay, you wait for the right opportunity. When that opportunity comes, you just get it. Okay, and that's exactly how you actually make money. Okay, well done, Moise. Thank you uh, for listening to, to us. Um, brilliant, all of you who have actually taken the sell. And again, if you have taken the uh, yen chief, actually chief yen, that would have been an extremely good trade here. You see here, from 180 it actually dropped to 176. That's a 400 pips in the matter of 10 minutes, okay? So that's what you're supposed to be doing. Well done to all of you. Right, calendar. Now, Monday would be expecting some sort of a slight uh, movement in the market. Again, I'm not expecting major movement on Monday. Um, dollar pairs, you might actually see some sort of uh, fluctuation, but it won't be major. It probably would be actually, if it goes up, it will come back down on the same day itself, uh, because I'm expecting this day to be a slightly manipulative day, especially for the last week's moves. You are going to see some sort of a movement against those Friday's moves. Then on Tuesday, we're expecting CAD, CPI, um, whether it's trimmed, median, or common, all of them, they're expecting the number to drop, which means you're expecting CAD to get weaker. But prior to that, I'm expecting CAD to get stronger. Shortly, I'll explain that to you inside the charts where from that level, I'm expecting a reaction. So if market has already tapped that level, you should be able to actually look for a decent sell setup on that. Uh, Wednesday, we are expecting GBP CPI on the year. Again, this might actually be slightly bit of a surprise here because I'm seeing pound to get quite strong. I did say that to you, uh, you know, at the start of this month as well, that the pound, especially after the election, would actually gain some strength. One, because of stability, political stability. Secondly, the, the trend for the pound is actually in the favor, at least until for the next two to three months. Now, I'll give you some levels today. If you watch out those levels, you would be fine. Um, and you would be able to make a decent money from that. But even if CPI will drop it, it will not be for a long term. It will be a short term drop and then market will start to push right back up again. It's heading to break at decent levels. Uh, you know, firstly 130, then 131. And again, for a long, medium to long term, we are looking at even 135. Uh, but we'll see uh, how market would unfold for the next few months. Thursday, we're expecting employment change. Again, they're expecting unemployment rate to actually go up which means you're expecting some weakness from the R side. And on the same day, we are expecting interest rate from the ECB. So again, they are expected to uh, you know, keep the rate as it is. Um, but prior to that, you will have my update. Wait for the update. That would actually give you a better understanding in what direction you should be trading this. But don't miss out on that one. You're going to get a very decent move. Either up or down, I will let you know on Wednesday. But it is too early for me to let you know now um you know for this move then we have um unemployment claim as well on the day they are expecting these numbers to actually go up again like i said to you dollar is not really uh you know looking bullish for the rest of this month so we will be potentially looking for a correction to start any time then a further drop to the downside until the end of this month friday retail sales month on month from the gbp side and also from the cad core retail sales this day probably would actually be a retracement day, I'd call it. Um, and you're going to see some decent movement on this day as well. So again, make sure before this day, you are actually managing your trade and you are taking profit on this day, because on this day, you're going to get a decent uh, you know, movement in the market. Why this decent movement would be? Because market will be giving you some reaction from the ECB uh, you know, on the Friday as well. Okay, So keep an eye on this one. This Friday probably would be a decent one. Now, that was the calendar for this week. Let's have a look what we have in terms of technicals. DXY. Now, 
before I start, let me just quickly uh, drink some water. Thank you. Sorry. Right. So DXY. We were expecting last week for the DXY to show us some reaction at 104.5. If you remember that, I did say that to you. If CPI has not broken 104.5 prior to that, then the CPI news will actually be making this to break this level. Market has done that. It was just going slowly to the downside here. And then because it didn't break this bottom here, there's no question for the upside. Even if it would have gone to the upside, it wouldn't have lasted long. It would have been probably just a week back down towards one of 4.5 level. Market did do that, came back up again, as you can see here. Let me just zoom it a little bit more uh, so you can actually see the structure as well. Now, after the CPI move, it has gone to the upside, tapped one of 4.5 again, rejected from there, came right back down. That's why I said to you, I need to really give it at least 24 to 48 hours before I actually trade any of these majors. If you are in the buys for the majors and you are selling the DXY, keep holding the sell and keep buying the majors because again, at this point in time, I do not see them actually reversing. I do see them actually going to the upside for a slight correction, something similar looking like this one here, and then perhaps one more break to the downside to test these two bottoms, okay? Once market has done that, which probably would take some time anyway. Um, then we will see what market has for us. But for now, you need to stay away at least for the next 24 hours from this uh, DXY or the majors. Again, if you want to trade them, wait for them to pull back slowly. And then one more drop testing the bottom before it goes back up for a slightly bigger consolidation. For me, I'm staying away and I will be sticking to the trades of the week that I'll be posting shortly after the session. Because remember, we are here to make money. I don't care which pair it will be. Okay. As long as I do see a setup, that's where you should be going and trading them. Now, Euro. Euro dollar as well. We were expecting Euro dollar to give us a reaction at 880, if you remember. And I did say that to you, it will be giving you reaction somewhere from here to this. It's 100 pips. You got that. And even further as well, this week, we would be expecting market to give us this pullback here. Because this structure is not done yet for me. I need to see this one coming to the downside either as a corrective structure or an impulsive structure first before market give me one more push to the upside. Because remember, it is not only heading to break this top here, it could be heading to break this top. I need to give you that confirmation on Wednesday because this move might be because of the ECB. Pound dollar, pound dollar also was expected to keep pushing to the upside. I did say last week, let the market consolidate. It is heading to test this top and this top as well. Market did do that. It is heading towards 130. Let the market tap the 130. And then from there, it's going to start the corrective structure. That corrective structure probably would give us a chance to get back in for the buys. Remember, this is going to be a... If you want to trade this to the downside, it will have to be a short-term trade. Now... Could that become something bigger like this? It can, certainly, but I don't see this one actually taking some more time here because we are in an impulsive structure. Usually when the market is in the impulsive structure, they don't take that long. What they do is they make some sort of structure like this. Like this, okay? And that's why you need to be careful with that. If you're selling it entirely your call, I don't see anything for the buy setups for, from this level. All I see is a pullback minimum or a slightly bigger consolidation, something like this, before market goes to the upside. Remember, it is going to go to the upside. Once market has done this, then the next level is going to be 131. Okay? And that will be the trade that I'll, I'll be interested in because pound is going to go to the upside for at least a good few months. And now after that, we will see this structure. Remember on the bigger picture, this structure, as you can see here, has completed pretty much this move here. Okay. Now, what we need to really see if this move is ready to break down, which, like I said to you, I do not see it getting ready yet. I do see this one getting ready after breaking this bottom here, uh, this top here. Okay. Because remember, pound dollar have got potential of making expansions, a lot of expansions, like you can see here. What it did 
went back up, corrective structure, push right back up, taken this top, this top, came back down, taken this bottom. Now again, the similar reaction, you have an impulse correction. Once market will take this top here, then we can expect some sort of a break to the downside. That break does not necessarily need to go and break this bottom, but we will see how far this is going to go to the downside. But first, this is not ready yet. This will be ready potentially from October onwards, not now. Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar was also expected to continue pushing to the upside. I did say that it's heading towards 68 level market, did tap that very close to that. It's going to give you a pullback here, one more push to the upside. It's going to stay for a bit above 68 level. Um, now, once market has gone above 68 level, we need to really see the reaction. For now, what you need to know is for the first half of the week, we are expecting majors to pull back and then push back up for the rest of the week, okay? New Zealand dollar, New Zealand dollar look, looks like this is going to take some more time here. Now this structure would probably would need some sort of a structure like this, break down before it goes back up. This is the only major out of all the majors which still have a potential for one more break to the downside to even test this bottom, okay? Dollar yen, dollar yen also has broken down. Now you must be having a question in your mind. How many of you, by the way, have got a question? Is it a reversal or is it a correction? I wanna see yes, no, please. Because this is a very critical question that I'm asking you. How many of you are having the question, is this a correction going down or is this a reversal going down? Right, correction, reversal, correction, correction, reversal, correction, 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 fantastic. This is exactly what I needed to hear and see. Remember, now, if you are saying this is a reversal, right? If you're saying this is a reversal, I need to see that market actually giving me a corrective structure here, and that will confirm me that's a reversal. For now, it's a correction. Always remember that. Whenever any move starts, for instance, this move here, the way market has gone to the downside, had the market given you a corrective structure, and broken down rather than giving you this corrective structure, this would have been a reversal pattern. Now, because of this correction after correction has changed the structure. And this is the most critical part that every single trader outside doesn't have a clue about. Because many people would be thinking, now this is going to be a corrective structure. Why? Because market has done this one here. Now, what if market will start to give you a corrective structure here would you sell it or would you buy it? If you buy it at this point in time, you are stuck not on this structure. What you are stuck at is here. Look at this structure. What if market has completed this structure and it's going to the downside and you have taken a buy here? Imagine that. If you have taken a sell here, imagine that. This is why you need to be understanding these structures in order to trade. Otherwise, you will always be confused whether it's a correction, whether it's a, whether it's a reversal, because that is the real question every single trader on the planet have. If you really understand how this trading thing works, that's the real question you should be asking yourself. And the way to know the answer is to understand the bigger picture. Now, this is a bigger picture I've just shown you. Always remember, when you're in doubt, always remember, when you're in doubt, that's why I'm actually, you know, taking a pause on this one because I want you to register this, yeah? When you're in doubt, always zoom out because when you are not understanding or seeing the structure, what will help you is the bigger picture. That bigger picture is going to tell you what's really happening. And because I've shown you this part of the structure now, whenever you're going to look for a buy from this level, you will always have this picture in front of you. Could this be the structure that the market has completed the expanding structure? And could this be the impulse for another impulse, which is going to start? That is the real question you should be asking yourself. 
Remember, I'm going a little deeper in this uh, today's session because I want you to understand that how critical it is when you are in confusion, you don't know what to do. And that is the way to actually go and move forward in the trading. Once you understand this bit and once your confusion about this will be sorted, there is no way you cannot make money in this. Okay. And that's why you need to understand. Now, again, like I said to you, at this point in time, it is a corrective structure. It is not a reversal. What will make this as a reversal if market gives me a correction here? That will change the picture. But now, if you ask me, like I was sh showing that to you on the gold last week, that even if market is actually going to go to the downside, it will just be a correction for a push to the upside. Because there is always, remember, when you know, when you keep on looking at the charts, when you spend time with the charts, I always give this example. It's like your friend. You know how they're going to react at certain point in time, certain surroundings and certain uh, you know, uh, circumstances. That is exactly how the market is working. For me, it is giving me that hunch that it is not ready to go to the downside. Yes, what it can do from this point in time can give us a slightly bigger corrective structure, making something str like this. And then we can head over to the upside. Had the market gone to the upside, tapped 163 and broke down, I would have been 70% sure that the market is going for a reversal. But because it didn't have that level, I'm skeptical that this is not the reversal. This is a corrective structure. Okay, we'll see. Again, the time will tell us. But at the moment, as of now, I do see this one actually going and testing the top once more. Not from this week. I do see this one actually lurking from somewhere here, slowly pushing down, slowly pushing down. When everybody is thinking now this is a reversal, they will push right back up. And that push to the upside might actually be starting something similar like this. Okay, so don't be trapped in that. If you are a trader, you will be able to actually be fine because we will be keep updating you anyway. Okay, but make sure what I've just explained it to you. Listen to it again once more when you get the recording. It will solve a lot of questions for you, and it will actually give you a totally new perspective of how you look at the trade. Okay. Now, Dollar Chief, Dollar Chief was also expected to give us this break to the downside. Market did do that. What else? We're expecting some more downside. Let the market crawl to the upside, break to the downside further. Remember, we have a lot of fair value gap that the market can fill. But I need to see market giving me some sort of a pullback here. One more break before it starts to go to the upside. It's going to take some time here. Not a great trade um, this week or not a great pair to trade this week, let's put it this way. Uh, but in all the cases, remember this structure still has a possibility of something like this, which I've been drawing here for you. So far, it's doing actually exactly that. So all what we need is a corrective structure here. And once have, we can expect market to at least test this bottom here. Okay. Dollar CAD, dollar CAD also has gone to the downside. Again, we did expect market to do that. Push to the upside break to the downside. It is not done yet for me. Even if market will go to the upside a bit more, it will still be one more break. Testing this bottom here will be coming because I need to see market doing something like this or at least something like this before it breaks down once more. Below this level, if you get a buy setup, might not be a bad idea, okay? Because below this, I can see that the bigger players are sitting, waiting for all the retail traders to lose their money so they can grab it just below this level here, okay? So keep an eye on this one. That was the majors. And uh, now let's have a look at the other Forex pairs, commodities, indices, cryptos, and your stocks um, and the requested charts. 